are on a whole nother level. And, um, and so it was overall a good, good weekend. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Happy Father's Day for any of you who are here that are fathers um, and welcome around the globe to you. And I'm sending out love and good vibrations to you in this moment. Uh, let me, it, the other day, it was so funny. I I tuned in to um, the channel, uh, this ACMI Gather channel, on my uh, iPhone that I have now. I, you, whatever. Uh, I've got this iPhone. And so I tuned into the channel and I started listening. And I do believe Lynn said it was Jennifer that was on. Bless her heart. And uh, she was doing, I guess she was doing reaches this time because I wanted to listen to reaches. And um, and so instead I got to listen to somebody else. And it was so funny because she said she was going to start off at the beginning of the book and just read. And, um, and so she started doing the introduction of the course. And as you know, because I know it by heart, I wanted to start saying it with her, but she was going so slow and interjecting all these ideas in there. And I was just sitting there laughing at myself at my own, uh, at my own, like, like, I think we are always hearing our own thoughts and our own voices. And I remember last week saying when I could just slow down and, and get out of my ego self and just listen, I learned so much more. And so, um, and so it's so funny. I just listened to that and, um, I heard it through, um, through somebody else's verbiage, somebody else's, out of somebody else's mouth as it crossed their lips. And uh, it made me love it all the more. So here we go. This is A Course in Miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish a curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The aim of the course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does ha aim, however, at removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposites. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, you know, it, it, it was funny because, I, you know, I, as I sat there and I listened and she kind of like turned over the ideas and the concepts and the words in her mind. It was as though I had, um, like every time I read it, I cue into something. Every time I quote it, I cue into something very different. It's as if it is this comfort zone that comes over me that goes into, into this idea. So even when it says, when it starts out and it says, this is a course in miracles, Miracles. It's like, oh, you know, I mean, how do you beat that? How do you beat that? Just the, the, the assuredness with which even when you're reading it, with, no matter who's reading it, the assuredness that comes across through spirit that says that foundationally I am laying a stone here under which you can put right up under your foot and stand up on. This is a course in miracles. Ah! It's a required course, not even firmer. So it, it goes, it starts off on that firm foundation and it goes even further firmer, even more firm, even more solid, even more authoritarian, saying that it is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. So it is like this bodacious assertion right out the bat, a first couple of sentences, first like 10 words. You know, it is this bodacious affirmation of of that this is a required course. So it's not saying maybe, 
It's not saying that if you happen to fall upon these books, it's not saying that if you happen to find Gather Room, it is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. And when it says that only the time you take it is voluntary, it's kind of giving you this thing saying you get to choose. You get to choose when you're going to take it, but not if you're going to take it. And so in your choosing, know that the curriculum, yeah, you cannot establish the curriculum. I mean, so, so, mm. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. The curriculum is firm, is set, it is in there. And so in that you cannot establish the curriculum, it's a required course, only the time you take it is voluntary. In all of that, you have this supposition and this knowingness. I'm sorry, not even a supposition because it is a knowingness. It's a firmness. It's a foundational, a, a, a foundational assertion that says that you're going to get this material. And whether you do it on, on the streets, whether you do it in the universities, whether you do it by way of this book or go to a church or whatever, it doesn't even need to have the labels on it, all you need to know is, is that what is going to happen to you is that you're not going to be taught the meaning of love, but rather you will know experientially the meaning of love because now it's about removing the blocks that you have placed to your awareness of love's presence. And that is your natural inheritance. Ah! So, so, so we come out of the box with this firm, this, 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 firm thing that says yes 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 you know um that you can you can put this all together and know that you are here on purpose and and um and and you know and just 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 be there i'm sorry i opened up this little window here and um and I'll get that later. Thank you for sending me that message. I'll get it. I'll pick it up later because I can't read and talk at the same time. Um, so, so it's it's all of that in this introduction. In the introduction, the bodacious claim that you will get this. You know, it only the time. Only the time is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish a curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. That course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. Why is it your natural inheritance? Because you are love. That is the essence of your being. That is who you are. That is the, the when, when in the Bible it says that God took um, the, from the, from the dust of the earth and he shaped you, he shaped you, that dust, that dirt, that essence of all that is, is the very thing that love is. It is love. And so you were made out of love. You are love. That is your, that is your natural, it is your natural state of being. And so we put all these blocks up in the way that block us from knowing love truly because we want to block it in. We don't want to let it flow out of fear, mostly out of fear. And so if we remove the fear, then we will have it naturally. It will be what it naturally is. And so, um, and so all of that is good. All of that is good. And I'm so glad that I was able to hear her and get it from uh, a whole nother like a whole nother perspective, because sometimes that's simply all we're doing. The miracle is when we have a shift in our perception. And so there was a shift in my perception because for some reason, is she kind of like, like a baby crawling or trying to take his steps, you know, these little steps forward. It it, it was like, you know, oh, like, and, and I saw that somebody um wrote in the window saying, say it in love, with love and let it flow from your being. And I was thinking to myself like, yeah, but it's one of those things 
it's kind of like um, a truffle when you take it into your mouth. You've got to kind of roll it around and, and feel the texture and get the fa flavor and savor all the goodness in it before you can really start to suck the, the, the nectar from it. And so there's this like juiciness about it when you kind of like just savor the flavor of that introduction. And and if you haven't like like gotten into the introduction before, I hope I hope that I say it over and over again enough that everybody who talks to me or hears me or listens to me or or says anything, I hope that when I say it that I give you and 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 convey to you the love with which I read that, the love for which I have for this teaching and this book and and for for everything that's in it. I mean, it is all that love. And so I just pray that um, that you see that, you feel it, and you know it when it's there. So I want to talk about something, um, and I'm not going to say that it's altogether different. Today, I want to talk a little bit about, um, I, I, you know, I'm always reading. I'm always like, um, even if I'm look, listening to, I'm listening to a book on on CD right now as I drive in the car. You know, I, I drive around in my car and as soon as I get in there, I turn on the engine and, and there's a, a book that'll start up. And it's great because I get to listen and um, and learn because I'm, I, unfortunately, I'm not always listening to you guys. Um, but I am listening to something and it's and it's cool. Talk about control, huh? Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm listening to something. And so, um, I'm listening to a book on, on CD in the car. You guys don't even want to know what that's about. Um, but, but then on the other level, I was listening to some fairy tales, of course, online. Cause you know, I love that. I don't know if you ever tune into, um, it's called LibraVox. LibraVox. Libra is um is 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 Italian for book, or maybe it is um um Latin for book. L i b r e Libra meaning um the book, and then no, I'm sorry, am I saying that wrong, or is it free? And then Vox is for voice. And so um, because the books are in public domain, you've got on LibriVox.org, um, you've got this opportunity that all of these people take to read books, read them chapter by chapter if they're in the public domain, read them chapter by chapter into, um, into an MP3 format, and then you get to download the book and listen to it. And so sometimes I walk along and I'm listening to um, fairy tales or stories or old books like Moby Dick. Um, since it's in the public domain, somebody, you know, people, people volunteer with this place and, you know, and they'll sit up on their microphone, just like we do here in the room and they'll read a chapter out of Moby Dick. And then, so every chapter that, you know, as it goes along, somebody is reading chapter one, this is Sandra and this is a LibriVox recording and it's part of the public domain, blah, 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 blah. And then somebody else reads chapter number two, Paul will read chapter number three and then dove number four. And so you have all these voices from around the world, um, different accents, different, you know, different sexes. I mean, just all kinds of different cadences that come up and read to you chapter by chapter these books. And so I love to get a chance to listen to them because, you know, I like um, mythology and I love symbolism. And as I get into the symbol symbolic meaning of the nursery stories, nursery rhymes, and the children's stories that we came up on, I sit there and I listen to them and it's like I, you know, it, ooh, it's so good. And so, you know, I was listening to one earlier today and um, did some reading and I listened to a book on CD. And so then when I got ready to come in here or come home to do my Course in Miracles, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, well, what the heck am I going to talk about? Because I have read and was listening to some of everything. No, A Course in Miracles is not in the public domain yet. Um, it has not been out there. I think a book has to be, you should know this, Paul, um, Dr. Tuttle, I should say. Um, it. I think they have to have been published like 50 years ago or um, the copyright, copyright has to um, have been expired. And so... Um, 
yeah, I don't think I don't think that it is a recording that out there. I don't know. There is a um, a site where you can download the original um, text of the Course in Miracles. You can download that for free. It does not come with all of the um, paginations. Um, all I, what? How do you say it? When uh, with all the numbers and everything, how the paragraphs and the chapters are numbered. But you can go out there and you can find um, the text in the public domain. But I have not seen it as it was being read anywhere um, like they are doing on Librebox for all these different books and so it's just wonderful how you've got all these people that read them and so you know I get to listen to all kinds of nursery rhymes I, I shouldn't call them nursery rhymes fairy tales all of these different things and then um, go back and and remember uh, see, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I, I, I talk so much, but it's cool because I got a whole hour, not, not quite an hour anymore, but I get to talk and then I get to come back on Wednesday and talk again from seven to eight. And so I get to talk. And so, um, I, I, re I don't know if you guys recall, I did the story, I, Cinderella just came up in my mind, but I didn't, I didn't do Cinderella. I've done so much work on the Wizard of Oz because of all the symbolism in the Wizard of Oz, and I find the Wizard of Oz story fascinating. But then again, but the Brothers Grimm out of Germany wrote so many different um, fairy tales, and all of them are layered with so much meaning um, and relevance, even to today. And so um, I, you know, I, I've looked at those over and over again, and I listen to those as different people read them over the air, over the, you know, over my iPhone or over the computer or wherever, and I get sucked back into it and then hear parts of the story that we didn't get in our, like, in our nursery rhyme stuff. So even the story of Cinderella, I don't know that I got how the story originally started until I started watching that um, the show once on um, on channel um, uh, ABC Network. Here, I started watching once, and I started thinking like, "Wow, was that the story of Snow White? And is that the story of you know um, the dwarfs? And is that the story of you know this person and that person?" And so all of these come out, and they come out with this layered meaning. And if you kind of look at the symbolism and back of numerology and all these other things if you look into that you is the the meanings are so rich and some of it I recognize that we give meaning to everything we see and so so yes there is this part of ourselves that we bring to it you know so if I said um you know, even if I'm looking at this from an ego perspective, mirror, mirror on the wall, you know, whatever it is, um, we take ourselves into that situation and then we get to apply it in our lives to see it where it is that we're green with envy, where it is that we're fighting um, with, with, with the images that surround us. We get to look at that in a different context. And so I get to explore that and roll it over in my mind over and over again until I come up to what with some epiphany um, that says, wow, you know, wow. And so, yes, I um, I listen to those things. But today, I'm going to talk about something different. <laughs> I want to talk about, I said all that to say, I want to talk about something different. So let me settle myself for a second. Um, and uh, I want to flip through because I, you know, Okay, so here's here's the first thing that pops to my mind, um, and I'll I'll try to relate all this back to the Course in Miracles. And um, if any of you want to point out some particular spot in the Course in Miracles and type it into the window, that's great. I know that I am rolling on UStream as well. Yay, uh, UStream. So um, that is, uh, yeah, ustream.tv forward slash. And I don't know that it's forward slash Sandra said it. I think it's forward slash um, something else. And anyway, but, but um, 
you can get it off my website or off of Facebook if you're just kind of like chilling, listening to this and you want to go in search of me sitting here in my uh, junkie office talking, whatever. Um, at any rate, there is... Um, so I'm going to share with you some stuff that I read um, earlier today and uh, and then tie it back into The Course in Miracles. Because here, here's the other thing. I'm not saying that, you know, everybody that comes in here talks about The Course in Miracles. I mean, sometimes we do and, and, and we, you know, talk about the book, the book, the book, the book, the book. But you guys have the book too, just like I have the book. If you're in this room, um, you have and know about the Course in Miracles. So to me, that's kind of like, yeah, I can, I can sit there and, and, you know, think like, okay, if I open up the page to this page and read this little section, it might appear to be new to them. But if I, if I kind of tie that back into something else in my life, I tell you guys this all the time, it's a practical course that means it should apply to and be applicable in our lives, in our daily lives. And so if that be the case, then you know, there's nothing that's off limits. And so I don't necessarily have to read to you chapter and verse out of the book, but rather I can talk to you about this stuff and then you can plug it in where it applies. Or if it doesn't, throw it to the side. Or you can expand because you know what? This is this is it's a beginning and not an ending, right? I mean, it's all about that. And so um, let's just just delve into this um, and and see where we're going with this. Life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So I am reading out of a. Um, oh, you know what? Oh my goodness! I looked up here, and I, duh, bless his heart, has up here what the workbook lesson is for today. And um, it's it's the workbook lesson is 168. I'm not going to read that because if you've been listening for a while, you know what it is. And uh, everybody has probably just turned this over to death. Um, Your grace is given me. I claim it now. And then when I turned um, the page, um, it says on, on the back, because I write in my Course in Miracles book. I hope you guys do too. It says on the next page, um, you know, the, the ending affirmation, it says, your grace is given me, I claim it now. Father, I come to you and you will come to me who ask, I am the son you love. And so then I wrote down here, see journal entry 1, 17, 2003. Um, write them, ah, and I'm writing prior to reading probably so um, and then it says and it refers me back to some page numbers and all that other stuff and so in my book is filled with these notations um, of 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 cross-referencing uh, workbook lessons with texts and with my journals and um, I I don't know if I share it with you guys I used to get so so frightened about the idea that someday somebody will be packing up my house when I'm gone and come across my journals and I've got I've got boxes of journals that I have kept over the years and um, I used to be kind of scared thinking to myself like oh they don't know you know this about me or they're going to know that about me but after I'm gone from this plane I don't know that I care who will know what about me um, and and it becomes this rich history of my life um, and my reflections and um, and all of that stuff so I'm so glad that I saw that and that I'm sharing that because it makes total sense with what I'm about to share with you now I was reading a piece out of a magazine. Uh, I read the Science of Mind magazines um, periodically, and this one was published back in 2006. And today I picked it up like it was brand new because I was at the doctor's office and it was in my car. So I pulled it out, took it in the doctor's office with me, 
and this was the doctor's office for me and not for my dad. So I pulled it out of my um, out of my car, stuck it in my purse, took it in the doctor's office. And as I was reading it, I was flooded with all these thoughts and ideas. And so I underlined some things because I wanted to share um, some of this stuff with you guys. But but also as I'm talking about this, I'm seeing that, you know, my notations in my book and how I'm tying it back to prior writings that I've done in my journal and prior readings that I've done in this book and other books and and remembering in this um, in this whole thing that for years, I mean, it, it's as if all of us have decades and years of studying studying different materials, different works, different ideas. And so um, so let me let me just read to you a little bit about out of this uh, article that I was reading, Living a Spiritual Life. It's by Margaret Stortz. I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, and she says here, she says, if we believe this self definition, let me see where did I. Uh, um, if we believe the self-definition, I'm just starting off somewhere in the middle of this, then we reconsider the question, then the reconsidered question would be, so I need to go up here, can I live a spiritual life in today's world? We are already doing so by default. It's not intentional, if not intentional. In all his presentations, Wayne Dyer loves to say that we're spiritual beings living a human life which I think is one of the most cogent definitions we could give ourselves. If we believe this spiritual, this self-definition, then the reconsidered question would be, how do I live a spiritual life in the world today? This is a good question, important and practical, because all spiritual awareness ultimately plays itself out on the physical plane. Let me repeat that again. All spiritual awareness ultimately plays itself out in the spirit, in the physical plane. In practical mysticism, a little jewel of a book was written almost a hundred years ago. Evelyn Uphill wrote, the spiritual life is not a special career involving abstraction from the world of things. It is a part of every man's life. And until he has realized it, he is not complete, a complete human being and has not entered into possession of all his powers. And so we talk a lot about here in the course about all of this being a dream, that it's not real, that um, that nothing is really going on and that, you know, that, that, that it never happened. And so we talk a lot about this, but then when, when we start to talk about what it means to be living life, um, when we, when we kind of like delve into it, go into the thing, just like I, I, I wanted to go into the, the introduction as we delve into that. What it's saying to us is, is that part of this, the, the, the intrinsic definition of life is the physicality of our lives and what we're doing on this level, on this plane. And so whether we're saying it's real or not, until we really get into this, that, that we are having a physical human experience right here and now until we can embrace that we're going to miss something and so for us to get the fullness of this course remember it's a required course you don't get to choose the curriculum remember that it said that in the beginning so as we delve fully into who we are we get that from a different perspective perspective when we embrace the fact that we are human in a physical in a physical being in physicality what we are here when we understand that we delve deeper into that and it brings a new richness that we must we must learn it's not like it's an option it is a required course only the time you take it is voluntary. And so sure, it says to us that ultimately in the end, you'll find out that you were just, it's a phase. It's kind of like, um, 
uh, over the weekend, it was so funny. We were having this kind of discussion, my siblings and I, we were all sitting around. And, um, and, and so uh, we were, we, you know, we, we were making jokes about our age. And so um, my youngest brother says, well, I'm closer to 40 than I am to 50. And he was laughing at me and my brother and saying, y'all are really close to 50, but I'm closer to 40 than I am to 50. Well, now he's 42, 43. And so my other brother, he says, he says, well, look at it like this. He says, you will never be 40 again. And until you can embrace that that is a done deal, <laughs> that it's a done deal, you can't go backwards and be again 40. All you have to look forward to and aspire to is what's to come and not what has been. So for all of us, where whether wherever we are on our spiritual journey, there are certain way stations that we have to go through. Whether we, you know, whether we believe that we are physical beings or not, there are certain way stations that we have to go through in order for us to grow through those certain stages. So you're here. You are, you know, you are, are living this experience with those ears. You are hearing me with that physical body. You are sitting there. Um, it took some fingers or something in order to tune into this. You are listening from your heart space. All of this. And, and sure enough, you might be flying around here in my room, but I seriously doubt it. Because if you did, you wouldn't need to be online listening to me, right? And so because you're here, there is certain things certain certain things that are going to happen for you as part of this physical awareness and part of it may be like I was listening to in that doggone um, fairy tale this this embracing this coming to terms with oneself in the physicalness of our lives not just the spiritual aspects but that married with and coupled with the spiritual aspects aspects. And if we if we stop trying to deny one part, we can probably really fully get another part. So as she goes on in this article to talk about this spiritual life, she said that she was struck as I was when she mentioned it and I remember so many years ago by this idea that we all come on this physical plane for a reason. We come with a reason and if we are in um fully in into where we are, this thing, it's as if we want to leave those breadcrumbs behind to show other folks how to do what we have managed to do, how to find the peace and how to find the love, how to realize that nothing real can be threatened. We want to leave breadcrumbs for other people. And don't tell me that you don't, because if you didn't, you wouldn't be listening to me now. You wouldn't be here in this room. You wouldn't be doing what you were doing. You, I mean, part of where you are means that you want to be and serve as and recognize that you are your brother's savior and that he is yours. And so it becomes this thing of how do I therefore leave breadcrumbs along the path for somebody else to travel? Because now that I found a way, now that I'm here, how do I help others get where I am? That's part of our, as, as teachers of God, that's part of our calling. That's part of what we do. So when I when I when I was struck by that I started thinking to myself like wow okay so so if my if my thing is about sowing something bigger sowing something deeper and um I need to transgress for another minute here um cuz cuz this was Father's Day weekend and like I said my um we all went out to see my dad who was in the hospital um all my siblings his grandkids were all there and we were all surrounding my dad and 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 even though he's not able to talk to us because of that trait that's in his throat we were sitting there and we were you know we were talking um around and all this other stuff and i could see his eyes as he darted from you know from one face to another and then to look at his grandkids and i kept thinking to myself like 
wow, how awesome that must be to know that as long as, you know what, it, there's an Indian proverb that says that as long you, that you will live as long as the last person whose life you touch continues to live. So it's as if we live on in the hearts and minds of those who have been touched by us or been loved by us. And so as you put love into this world, your life continues on. As my dad was laying there in that bed and he's looking at his grandkids, I knew that he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he carries on. When I look in the mirror and I see my mother looking back at me because that's who I look like, I know that she lives on. How can we truly die as long as somebody is, is you know, we don't leave this physical plane. I mean, this body, we may transcend this body and on a spiritual level, continue on as spirit. But we, the spirit of who we are, of what we bring to the table continues on no matter what when we bring love into it. And we don't want somebody to be kicking dirt on us trying to, you know, say, whoo, I'm glad they're gone, but rather so thankful that we lived. And so as I looked at my dad and I knew, I felt the pride that he felt um, and the hope that he felt about tomorrow, I kept thinking to myself, I have felt that feeling before. So so I used to, um, a, another story, I used to be a part of a meditation group with um, uh, Sherry McCrary. Sherry McCrary is a beautiful minister who was, um, who is here in uh, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. I don't think she lives here anymore. I think she's out in California now. She could have moved. She loves, she's like one of those folks that she kind of like moves. She just like decides I'm going to move out to California and moves out to California or out to Colorado and moves out there. And um, she was a an attorney by trade, but a minister still. And so on Wednesday nights, I would go over to her house and she would have these meditation circles. And um, regardless of whether anybody showed up or whether it was two or three of us, um, she still always had the meditation circle. So anyway, um, Sherry was, uh, we were having a meditation circle and um, we, we, you know, some of us sit on the floor, some of us on the couch, she burns incense, rings a bell, you know, we go into meditation, blah, 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 blah. You know how a meditation circle goes. It was always a wonderful, beautiful experience. And the fact that it was, you know, just, just kind of like um, one of those predictable things, it was always good. So, um, anyway, one particular day as we, you know, we went through our meditation circle, we meditated and, um, after it was over with, I opened my eyes and I saw this iron that was sitting right on, um, the base by the fireplace. Um, it was sitting down there by the fireplace and, and I saw it and I thought, wow, look at that iron. It was really one of those old irons, you know, um, it wasn't the kind, it didn't have any plugs or any cords connected to it and it was heavy. It was like a, you know, like heavy probably a good 10, 12 pounds. And so I asked her about it because I was totally drawn to this iron. And I asked her about it and she was like, it was a slave iron. And she was talking about how they had passed it down through her family um, from, you know, from her like great, great, great grandmother and to her, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so down the line. And so um, she was talking about how when it was her turn to get this iron, a slave iron, she drove down to Alabama and picked it up and brought it back. And so she had it sitting there by on um, by the fireplace. And um, when I went over and I grabbed the iron, and you know, I told you guys I've been through these psychic development classes. I grabbed the iron and as I sat there and, um, you know, I set it down in between my legs and, you know, I'm holding on to it. And all of a sudden I could feel the tears rolling down my face. And even now I'm getting choked up. I'm, I'm trying that to you guys. Um, I could feel the tears rolling down my face because I kept thinking the whole time I was holding it, I kept feeling all these emotions 
that were on this iron. And you know, anytime I'm doing something repetitive like ironing or washing dishes or, or cleaning house or something like that, I get lost in my thoughts. I get so trapped up in my thinking about things and I lose myself in them. And so um, I could see somebody's energy totally being on this iron. And as I held this iron, what I felt was not was love what I felt was love and the love said that I'm doing this not for me because my life you know my life I can end it now I'd be okay it's not for me it's for the generations that come after me and because I am they will be and I felt the strength that was conveyed over that repetition of ironing clothes, that love that went into not this their generation, but those that were to come after them. And so it becomes this passing of a baton, so to speak, as we go through life, that we recognize that the things we do impact those that come after us. And so whether or not this is your truth or not, on a physical level, there is this, this onus, this, this opportunity, this desire for us to leave breadcrumbs for those who will come after. And so I know the analogy of the breadcrumbs and how the birds come along to eat them. But nevertheless, it is what we do. We drop crumbs so that people could get some awareness about what is to come in their life. So I, I thought about the slave iron that I held. I thought about the Harriet Tubman's of the world. I thought about the women's suffrage movements and how a lot of times the things that they were doing in the moment weren't for themselves, but for their children and their children's children and how we continue to leave these things. So as I thought about and reflected on that, as I embraced that, I kept thinking to myself, what is it that I'm doing here right now that is contributing to the the long term, the 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 leaving of breadcrumbs for somebody else behind? And I kept saying to myself, my living, let my living not be in vain. And so if we fully embrace the fact that we are physical beings living in this present time on this planet Earth. What is it that we are here to do? Somebody has written this Course in Miracles. They have left their breadcrumbs along for you to follow. They have left steps, steps, 365 lessons. They have left chapter upon chapter upon verse for us to embrace and for us to follow. But it doesn't say stop there. It says that this is not an ending, but yet a beginning. And so it is up for us to recognize who we are and what it is our responsibility to do. It doesn't say for you to like shirk what it is that you're supposed to do. Um, shirk your responsibilities because you believe that this is not your truth. This is not ultimately who you are. It is who you are right now. And only until we embrace that fact can we really give and contribute something for those that come after us. As I read these fairy tales, as I read Joseph Campbell, as I read all these people People who have written something, they did so not just about some dollars and cents, not just about money, but rather so that we might get a glimpse, huh? Like in like Doug would say, like so we can save time, so you can understand who you are and what you are. And so it's it's so amazing to me because I sit there and I think to myself, I don't want to take away from anything or anybody, but rather add to. What can I bring to the table? What can I add? What can I do that contributes to the upliftment of all of us? And so it becomes this thing about, you know, not just, just reading this just for your own good and for your own enlightenment. If that was all you were doing, what, what, what? To what end? To what end? You you are living, you are a physical being, and you will die, right? To what end, though? It is about more than just that. It is about more than just this finite moment. It's about something bigger than all of us are in this moment. And until we fully embrace that, we're just we're just playing. That's just it's 
uh, it's just show business as, as, as um, uh, what's that girl's name? Miriam Williamson would say, we're just showing up and, and, and playing a part on the stage. It would just all be show business. But you have a responsibility. You have something to bring. You have something to give here and now. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you want to hide behind that phrase. We, I need do nothing. Yes, yes. It's a requirement. It's a requirement of our soul. It's a requirement of our being here that we leave something. And you know what? It says that matter is neither created nor destroyed. So, so there is something solid that is here, that it was you, that is you, that you are leaving behind. It is something that you are contributing. So let it be more than just some dust. In the end, let it be the love. And how do you express, how does that love expand itself? How does it grow? It grows by being shared. It grows by taking an idea and giving it to somebody else and saying, here, carry this ball. Here, spread this word. Here, do something with this. That's what Paul did with the, with the teachings of Jesus. It was like he wanted to expand it so that people could grasp onto it. And yes, we have all these good intentions. Yes, sometimes it starts out with selfish ideas. But if we truly get into the meaning and and, and and, and love can't help but transform you. When love moves into your system, when when it comes into your life, it can't help but transform you. I mean, the mere essence of it moving into the vortex of your experience, of your being, it transforms you. And that transformation has to be shared. As a matter of fact, you can't help but share it because it, it kind of infiltrates everything you do. It transcends and transforms the very energy that you are. It removes the blocks between you and your brother. It removes the blocks between all of us. That's what love does. It is like this unrelenting tide that simply cannot be denied. And so it becomes this thing of not about, you know, um, us and them or, or the, you know, the, it becomes this thing of like, like you no longer stand on the shore and watch as the river goes by, but rather you take part in that and recognize that that gravitation, that the pull of the river, the momentum of the river catches you up and you no longer see the river in yourself, but become it. You are it. You are the very love that, that, that you're supposed to be sharing. You are it. And so how do we remove the blocks to our awareness? Simply just, you know, stand up and affirm it. Be it. And it will transform you. It'll show you. It'll show you how to express it and how to flow. Because it's, a, it's your truth. Is your truth. And so if you let that truth move through you, you have no choice but to be who you are. I see you. I see you, Dr. Hill. Let me read what you said. Ah, I love this. I love this because, you know, whether whether we're talking about um, people from 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 whenever, it's as if we know this this whole idea that life carries on, carries on, carries on. And while you're in this physical plane of life, it's like this unrelenting force that is just going to go no matter whether you like it or not, no matter whether you agree with it or not, no matter whether you think it's real or not. It's happening. It's happening. And in order for us to fully get fully get what we're supposed to be, get out of it. We have to embrace this part, love it and suck every bit of the juice out of it. Oh, y'all, that's so wonderful. And so I love, I love, I love, I love, because you know what, of course, I, I've been talking for an hour and, and I, you know, and, and sometimes I have I have no idea. I have no idea when I come in here what the heck I'm supposed to talk about, what the heck I'm supposed to say. But spirit knows. And I'm simply trying to say yes to that. And I think that that's all of our responsibilities to get out of our own way and simply say yes. Because I don't know that this is supposed to be about me. When, um, when, when Dr. Jackson started talking that stuff in his sermon about how I was right, I was thinking to myself, I wasn't trying to be right. I wasn't trying to say anything that was right or profound or anything like that. It just happened to be something that was applicable to him. I came back here on Wednesday and I told you that was the craziest class I had ever taught. 
taught. It was the craziest class I ever taught because I was sitting there saying it was like a runaway horse, a runaway train, and I just couldn't get a hold of it. It just seemed like it was beyond my control. And then to have people come back and tell me, wow, that was the best class. I was like, really? Really? I'm shocked. And so I, but, but I also recognize that it's not about me. It's not about my desires. It's not about my level of, of being in control. It's really about opening my mouth up and saying yes to whatever comes out because I don't know what's supposed to come out. It just comes. And if I just say yes to what the next thought is and the next thought and the next thought, uh, then eventually we'll be, you know, where we're supposed to be. We'll get what we were supposed to have. We'll love who we were supposed to love. We'll say the things to the people that we were supposed to say the things to. And sometimes I know I can be kind of um, blunt. I can be harsh. I can be loving. I can be uh, any multitude of things. I can say to you stuff that I was like, wow, did I really say that? I can even not even, I, sometimes I really try to clean it up and make it pristine and pretty and all clean and everything for you. But then it wouldn't be my truth. It would be the truth that I think you want to hear. And so what I try to do is, is throw my slop down there and just let it fall where it is. Oh, man. And then when somebody comes back and tells me they like it, it's like, really? Really? Did you like that? It was just stuff. It was just stuff. It was stuff that Spirit gave to me and I was supposed to say. Okay, so it's 7.59. I'm supposed to be up in just a second. So let me read what um, Dr. Hill. Are you on next? or could do it? Okay, I'm going to read what you said. God only knows you now, no future or past um, for the big six. Be here now so you can know and be known by the creator. Gravity, guilt, and obligations, I don't touch them. No bugs on me. I will get my ivory and the tile. And yes, he's rolling right after me. So you guys, um, listen, this has been Sandra. Uh, remember, SandraSetter.com. Follow me on Twitter at Sam Bishop at San, S-A-M-B-I-S-H-O-P. I'm on Facebook at Sandra D. Bishop, or you can uh, like me at Sandra Thrives on Facebook as well. And I've got some other stuff coming up too, because uh, especially since I got that little iPhone, I'm going to try some different things. I might even be able to stream someplace. Who knows? Anyway, I will be back here on Wednesday. I love you guys, and thank you so much for tuning in with me, and I'll see you on Wednesday from 7 to 8 again. <gasps> It's, it is what it is. All right. So love you. Mwah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dove. Thank you, everybody. And I'm letting go of the mic with that. Yes. Woo! That was big. It was huge because I just felt like I was just talking up a storm and just going on and on and on and on and on. And so, um, yeah, and now it's done. So I'm going to cut off the thing because, um, oh, let me cut it off. Stop record.